Welcome back, WNST, Towson of Baltimore, and WNST.net. The Maryland Terrapins have made things interesting around here, but downstream, the UMBC Retrievers haven't lost in a period of time. Coppin State's playing some good ball, Towson as well. And this guy loves that part of it, and he was a little under the weather last week. It's good to have Robert Kennedy, Buckets and Birds back on, and of course, Compass Point Golf down in Pasadena, where you can play 36 holes when the weather gets as nice as it was on Monday. Robert, uh, you know, I, I talked to Coach Odom earlier in the week over at UMBC, and I said, man, Robert Kennedy and I got together like the first week of January, the second week of January, the third week of January, and it felt like everything was going the wrong way. It really is amazing six weeks later, local basketball's on the uptick, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, you know, we've been talking about that all year, is whether things would get straightened out uh, for them when they got healthy. And I think, you know, I've mentioned in the last week or two, they're as healthy as they're going to be probably for the rest of the year. But, uh, you know, that really shows to me the big, I don't know, um, you know, what he said, I haven't had a chance to listen to that yet, but the uh, biggest thing to me was getting R.J. Idlerock back and healthy, you know, because he's, you know, uh, as a point guard, he's got such a great basket, basketball acumen, you know, that he just, he's like a coach on the floor. And, uh, you know, he makes it easy uh, to get the ball in the right places and everything. And I think everything, you know, of course, you got to get the scoring from Big Jackson and the other guys, but and Horvath. Uh, but I think having him on the floor and healthy is, you know, was really kind of the start of getting things pointed in the right direction again for them. Well, we were at a point where maybe they weren't going to make their tournament. I know uh, in previous years, uh, Loyola Coppin really, really struggled. It's been a little bit of a renaissance the last couple of weeks in a lot of places, and certainly a tough one to be talking about the Terps after the loss in Columbus, but. The Terps have also awakened and let people know, hey, you know, this Big Ten tournament's a couple weeks away. We have a real basketball month ahead, and thank God for that because the massing games aren't on, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, you know, um, over the last two weeks or so, even the last week when I've uh, been at each game and had a chance afterwards to talk to the coaches, you know, I was, I kind of, you know, us in the media and the fans, we can look ahead to tournaments and seedings and things like that, you know, because that's what we like to do. The coaches, you know, it's always, you know, it's about the next game. It's about tomorrow. So, you know, I've held off asking them about seedings or what they're thinking on for the tournaments because that's in their eyesight right then. But, you know, now we're getting down to that time where, you know, Maryland has, what, three games left or four games left. You know, Towson has two games. Uh, UMBC. So now you're at the point where those things start to matter. Maryland, I think, is going to, you know, barring a just interesting collapse, I think they're going to go in as the number one seed. You know, and again, you know, uh, they've been the best team in the conference all year, and you know, just losing at Ohio State on the road is you know not the, certainly no big big disgrace. You know, they've been playing well as well, and you know, Towson is actually trying to position themselves for a top four seed in, in their bracket. And UMBC, like you, you mentioned earlier, they were going to were they going to be the odd man out in the American East tournament, not even get in. And you know, now after coming off the opposite of Vermont earlier this week, uh, another strong win last week up there at, uh, I believe it was Albany. And, you know, they, they position themselves to be in the mix. So, um, yeah, the, the, the tournaments are going to be fantastic, you know, time over the first first week of March as we get into that. Uh, get, get the bigger picture with Maryland and a one seed and a national championship or a Big Ten tournament or getting past the, the round of 16 and where what that would look like three or four weeks from now. The depth has come into play, and especially in the loss to, uh, to Ohio State. Uh, you know, no one's deep like that. No one's running eight and nine guys out. And uh, as Dick Girardi pointed out, we were talking about Penn State and talking about the Big Ten, that once you get into the conference tournament uh, and then into the real tournament, you're getting these four-minute timeouts. You're getting TV timeouts that these kids rebound, respond, and, you know, can give you 36, 38 minutes, right? Yeah, you know, and you've seen these rotations, you know, swing throughout the year, early in the year, non-conference. They might be playing nine or ten, you know, especially the Maryland's, you know, where they're getting the blowout games. and You know, but then even more so the Towsons and UBCs that are trying to figure out their rotations and, who you know, who's going to be on the floor for them come conference season. So you may see, you know, nine people there, eight people there, maybe not with UBC, the injuries they had this year, but under normal circumstances you would. You get down to this time of year, you know, heading into the tournament, you, you know who your seven, maybe your eight guys are going to be that you, you can count on, and that's your rotation. And, and then you hope you to know, God like they don't said, get hurt, right, after that. Exactly. And, you know, the coaches start to take it maybe a little easier in practice. They, you know, they'll do more walkthroughs as opposed to full-speed run, you know, running practices. And, 
kind of pace themselves a little bit more. And a lot of it depends upon your team. If they're a young team and they're you know filled with freshmen, where they you know coming off playing twenty games in high school versus you know thirty plus in college, you know, but Maryland's a veteran team. They've been there. You know, Talon's been here as a senior. He's been through it all. And, you know, had the bad game against Ohio State, but you know he's not going to be Superman every night. And yeah, that showed there. Uh, just happened to be a bad night for both him and uh, Jalen Smith to have off nights, if you will. And it was great to see Ayala and Wiggins, you know, have great games. You know, we've always said that we need that third guy for them to step up, for them to really get where they want to go. They're going to have to have that third guy step up, whether it's Ayala or Wiggins. But you know, they have to do it on night. Uh, Smith and Dallin, excuse me, uh, you know, had off night. So, uh, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see that depth. He's playing seven or eight guys, and, you know, his rotation is pretty short as well right now. Robert Kennedy joining us, uh, trying to get him into a better cell down there at Compass Point. You can find him at Buckets and Birds out on Twitter. You can usually find him courtside. Uh, pretty good courtside view all the way around. I mean, Loyola's winning games at this point. Towson sort of holding their own, although they dropped one to William & Mary uh, at home last week. But by and large, Towson near the end of their rope here. Only a couple of games left, uh, including the game out of Northeastern uh, up in uh, Boston later on in the week as well. Well, some thoughts about Towson and where they are. Yeah, you know, really like what I've seen over them the last, after that 0 3 start. You know, they came back and won seven in a row. And, you know, then they dropped uh, really a game that you would have liked to have seen them win William and Mary at home. You know, they just came out flat. And it was just one of those you know, performances that probably drew, uh, uh, you know, um, drove uh, Scary Tough, you know, nuts as far as, you know, the, just they didn't compete in that game. But then they came back with a really good win against Elon. And, yeah, they've got two left, Hofstra and Northeastern, before the CAA tournament. Both those are on the road, and those you know, Hofstra's the first-place team, and Northeastern's a team they've always struggled against, although Northeastern is down a bit this year. So if they come out of those with a split, they're going to go into the CAA tournament as you know, probably the number four seed, and likely they may face you know, um, uh, Charleston or uh, William & Mary again. So it's you know, there, there's no easy team in that league. Uh, Hofstra's the class above everyone else this year but everyone else has kind of been there beating up on each other so uh can they put three games together in a row and you know uh, take take that tournament it's something they haven't done before quite frankly but you know they they've got as good a chance of maybe of anyone outside of Hoster doing it I, you know i'd like to see them at least win one game and you know get into the semifinals and you know that would that would be a good step in the right direction and you know maybe even get to the final so uh but they've been playing pretty good of late, you know, and they've got a lot of seniors leadership there and Brian Fobbs as well, and their freshmen are coming on, which bodes well for the future. Well, the big game at Hofstra on Thursday night for the Towson Tigers. Obviously, the uh, the Terps getting back after it again this week in Minnesota. Uh, we'll be at the game against Michigan State on Saturday night, so Luke and I will be uh, courtside for that one. I just want to throw a little nod to Loyola because – you know, after Pat Sos, it's been kind of hard to see where they are. They won some games back at uh, December, some out-of-conference games, then really, really scuffled. They won a month without winning. They've won a couple of games. They play Navy uh, on, on Wednesday night as well, and, uh, you know, nice little local matchup there. We talk about these things. But all of these programs, Coppin State's won, uh, won a game again over the weekend, and, uh, and Juan's got those guys playing better, and they got a conference tournament ahead as well. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned Loyal. You know, you're right. I've had that seven or eight game losing streak uh, pretty much to start the conference season. Um, you know, now they've won six of seven, and you know that's a big matchup with Navy uh, coming up uh, later this week. So that's you know that'll that'll be a really uh, you know good local game just down the road from them, and you know to see how they do. That's again, that's a tournament that's going to be played at you know a campus site. So the you know first four seeds will you know be hosting the second four. They they probably don't have a chance, obviously, to get in that top four with the way they started and everything. But, you know, more importantly than that, it'll be the way that they are uh, going in, you know, playing. And I really like what Tavares Hardy's done there. You know, he's, he's done a great job with the program. And, um, you know, they, uh, they've had some injuries earlier in the year. And, you know, again, like everyone else. But uh, it'll be exciting to see if they can continue that momentum into the uh, Patriot League tournament as well. Coppin State travels over to Hill to take on Morgan at 4 p.m. on Saturday. You'll hear that game right here in the uh, hometown rivalry uh, game in the MEAC as well. Uh, I think all of these teams are playing well enough that once the tournament starts next week, week after that, all of them 
have a chance to be playing themselves in the semifinals and finals where on those Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, um, it's sort of going to make for daily drama. Somebody's going to be playing a meaningful game almost every day. I think that's all you can ask for as a college basketball fan. And it's been quite some time since we can say that, that all of these teams can rattle a cage and win a game or two in their tournament, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, it's a great point. Uh, other than, you know, um, UMBC and their run two years ago in the uh, American East tournament, you know, it's been a pretty quick exit for the other teams, not named Maryland, you know, in their conference tournaments. And, uh, you know, so, but like I said, they're all going into it looking looking pretty good and playing well. And uh, it, would, it would be a, great for the local basketball scene if, you know, if we've got two, three, four of them that are playing deep into their tournaments and uh, have a lot of action going on, you know, during that midweek before, before the big tournaments, you know, the Power Five wins take over that final weekend of the season and everything with their with their conference uh, finals. So it'd be great to see a lot of these teams in action leading up to that. Good stuff, uh, Robert Kennedy joining us. Buckets and birds down at Compass Point. Weather's holding up, dude. Right? I mean, you know, not a foot of snow yet. Uh, uh, I would think most days there are. Lots of folks running around down there on the on one side or the other of Mountain Road, right? <laughs> uh, absolutely. There's, uh, you know, it's definitely not been typical February weather, and uh, the golfers have taken advantage of that. You know, um, the days are you know filled with golfers out there that might not make our superintendent Tom Tokarski so happy. You know that he, he'd rather see the grass get some rest during the winter and come back healthy in the spring, but uh, you know it keeps the cash registers ringing and keeps the golfers happy, so it's all good. Well, I'll tell you what, I know you got some events coming up uh, as well into the spring. I'll send everybody out to the events page. March 14th, the 2020 Irish Open and Million Dollar Shootout as well. You can learn about it at compasspointgolf.com. And, of course, you can follow Robert Kennedy at Buckets and Birds. Hey, good to have you back and feeling yourself, man. we got to get you uh, feeling 100% for these conference tournament games and for some spring golf, buddy. That's right. You got to play hurt this time of year, right? You work and play through it. So, hey, man, uh, my wife doing. spent the whole month of January you know, down for the count. So I'm glad she's doing better. I'm glad you're doing better. It's almost springtime. Go hit him straight, Robert. Great, great having you on. We'll see you next week. All right, Nestor. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you then. Luke Jones and I will be out down at College Park at the Xfinity Center on Saturday night for all things Tom Izzo and Sparty as they're coming to College Park. My man Jack Crabby going to host us down there and, uh, I mean, a little turtle night out. Reminders of some nights at the VU in Santa Fe in the Ritchie Coliseum. It'll make me feel young again, like I do at College Park. I'm wearing my uh, Keep Preakness in Baltimore pin on my coal roofing hat. Apologies to you, Robert Kennedy, for not wearing the Compass Point hat, but I, I just happen to have this hat on. I want to make sure we're giving a nod out to uh, what's going on down in Annapolis this week, too, to keep the Preakness and Pimlico percolating on the third weekend of May. So we got Orioles in spring training, Cheaters in Houston, <laughs> Terps on the hardwood, and, of course, the Ravens out in Indianapolis looking for all things combine. Baltimore positive ahead as well. Ted Venatul is joining us at State Fair in Catonsville on Thursday. Big week ahead. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, WNST Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore sports.